So where do you, so what are some of your predictions in terms of your, from your technical analysis? Like, where do you see this going? Like <laughs> this is the billion metals, dollar question. Right precious now. <laughs> metals and crypto. Like where, where, give me some, give us some of your predictions. <laughs> yeah, we haven't talked too much about gold and precious metals yet, no, but um, I think that, that Bitcoin uh, is very likely to move at least to 100K in this bull run. My personal target just on my technical analysis is around 320K. Mm -hmm. um, but it will very likely be followed by a violent reversal. Of 100%. Yeah. And um, so I'm, I'm, I mean, comparing the DeFi boom now with the ICO boom three years ago, I think DeFi is much more uh, interesting and has much more value in itself and is much more of an advanced, uh, how can I say that? Like, it's, it's a much more a need that is being served here, uh, while the ICO was really just playing around and Money doing grab. something with crypto, you know. Mm, yeah. so, um, um, but still, the pullbacks or the correction will be deep and, and painful at some point. But I don't think we're there yet. But very likely, uh, at some point during this year, we will see a, a, an important top in Bitcoin, at least for a year or two. So yeah, 100K is a given, 300K is still possible. And that would mean if Bitcoin goes to 300K, I think Ethereum could also go to 20K, mm. um, it's possible. Um, but I, I, I don't necessarily look, look too much in, on, on such pr predictions. You know? I think it's more important that you take profits on the way higher. Mm -hmm. and you need to have a systematic approach for that. So what we are really, always talking about in our channel, for example, is uh, the quad exit strategy for my partner, Kobe, where he constantly basically takes profits and, and, and the, the remaining position then basically becomes a long-term buy and hold position because you've done, taken out so much profits that you can easily sit through any larger pullbacks and mm -hmm. crazy volatility. The and risk off good. trade, basically, yeah. right? It, it, it kind of brings equilibrium to your psychology, also, I find, because you're less risk on from that, from that exactly. act. It, it's exactly that. It's to support your psychology, you mm. know, because um, if it's a, a position that that you know, I I have no risk in it anymore because mm -hmm. I took out my initial investment. I even took some money on top out of it because I realized some gains. The rest is free money, mm -hmm. and you just let it run. And suddenly it becomes much easier to, yeah. to just sit on your hands, do nothing and let it run. And that's what you want to do in a crypto bull market, man, because mm -hmm. these things go much higher than anybody can imagine. But if what? you do this with a full position, it's going to be more difficult. <laughs> yeah. So that's anyway, the most important advice, I think, like keep the position sizing small, whatever you do. Uh, make it in, in such a size that you will be always mentally in charge of it, that you can always lead the whole thing and that you're not becoming the slave of your position. You know? Yeah. The hardest part too is uh, it's very easy to buy. It's the hardest part is knowing when to sell. Um, and I think over time, because I started day trading about six and a half years ago when I first started, I'm sure we were all susceptible to the biases and the hype and you know, you, you, you kind of go nuts if the, the stock was down like 20%. But, you know, over the last six years, I've, I've understood if you make 100% on a position, take out your cost, ride it out at that point. Because like you said, the psychology kind of uh, calms you down in that situation. 